Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo. Today we're on the Dutch side of St. Martin at the Phillipsburg Cruise Port on the Celebrity Edge. We're here on our third port on a four-port Caribbean cruise. All the Caribbean cruise ports are different with lots to do and lots to see. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about the Phillipsburg St. Martin Cruise Port so you can prepare for your day. All that and more coming right up. start with arrivals and departures. There are two docks so you don't need to tender, although I do want to try tendering from the magic carpet sometime aboard the Celebrity Edge or Apex. The first pier opened in 2009 and is 545 meters long and can accommodate four ships at the same time. The second pier which opened in 2017 can accommodate the largest cruise ships like Royal Caribbean's Oasis class. This pier is 445 meters in length, and it can actually fit two Oasis-class ships at one time. There were a couple other ships parked while we visited, specifically a couple Royal Caribbean ships, and I can imagine how busy it would get if all these ships and the piers were full to capacity. The dock does not take long to walk down, but there's not a lot of shade, and in the middle of the area, on the dock, there isn't much shade once you get down there. So we do recommend that you put on your sunscreen before you get off the ship. No one wants to be uncomfortable with a bad burn. <laughs> right, Erin? <laughs> Just kidding. Actually, it's usually me that burns. At the end of the dock, there is security, and you do need to show your cruise card on the way back. We only needed our cruise card to disembark, but it's good practice to take your passport with you as that has been required of us in the past and you don't want to have to go back to your room. That had happened to us actually on our NCL cruise and when you're all excited to get off and explore the port, you don't want to have to run back to your room for photo ID. In terms of masks, when we were sailing, we were being asked to wear them inside and outside at the port. The cruise will give you information around that before you dock. Before we get to the port atmosphere and what to bring, I just want to pop in here to thank everyone who has liked and subscribed to our channel and say we have tons of cruising videos about ship tours and ports just like this one, you know, places like NASA and Costa Maya. So when this video is done, be sure to check out our channel, watch some other videos and do like and subscribe. So on to port and atmosphere. St. Martin is known as the friendly island because it is so welcoming and has a diverse cultural activities. The shopping area at the end of the pier is called Harbor Point Village. We were on the first cruise ship to return to St. Martin, and there were no other cruise ships at the port. There were, uh, as Linda said, some of the Royal Caribbean ships were tied up, uh, which was interesting to see. I'm sure you got pictures there. Most of the restaurants and market shops were open, but a few were not. This is a manufactured cruise port, similar to Charlotte and Ali. The shopping area has all the typical shops and essentials that you see in a port, including your typical Diamonds International store and Duty Free. There are a lot of souvenir shops, and there is a small market uh, that uh, has sort of stalls that are locally owned, which I always love seeing. There are a couple of bars and restaurants you can stop at for drink and to enjoy the views. Right in the middle is Sharky's, which would be great, but which would be a great bar to grab a drink. And for some uh, people watching, because you get to see everyone come off the ship and you're really centrally located. To me, the main purpose of the port is shopping from jewelry to souvenirs. There is no lack of shops. It is also well laid out to meet uh, your, with your tour groups to get a cab or take the water taxi. While we were in port, uh, it wasn't very busy, as most people getting off the ship did excursions, um, and there were some like us who were just wandering around the local port and taking local transportation. You can tell that the port is made for, large, for a very large capacity with how wide the main streets are, and it is a huge uh, duty-free area. So if you're interested in duty-free, this is the port for you. So they clearly expect a lot of people. Yeah, when we stood back to look around at how big that main area is, you, you definitely have the feeling this was made for a large capacity. So in terms of food and dining, as we said, there's a Sharky's Well position right when you get off the pier and you're making your way into the shopping area. There look to be other areas that may have offered food, but this port is really more about shopping and getting to your next destination. If you want to eat out while you're off the ship in St. Martin, we recommend going downtown where there are lots of great restaurants and bars to choose from. 
Although our video, just like all these port tours, are mainly about what specifically is the port, uh, is at the port, uh, the idea of these videos is so you know whether or not you should pick an excursion or whether or not uh, the port's uh, got enough stuff there for you. So this is strictly about the port, uh, but we did want to mention a few things that are near the port as well. One of the cool things that was offered at St. Martin was a water taxi to the beaches and shopping in Philipsburg. It's super affordable, only costing $7 uh, US round trip. The taxis run frequently, which is nice, so you can come and go as you please. There is a route to walk or take taxis as well. Depending on the speed you walk, it will take you between 15 or 30 minutes to walk to Phillipsburg. If you're looking for the beach, there are many people who rent chairs and more. In our experience, the farther you walk, the cheaper it is. One of the most popular beaches is Maho Beach. This beach is right across from the runway of an international airport. The planes can fly as low as 50 feet overhead as they land. This is definitely a beach that I really wanted to visit. The larger planes can cause waves, so if you have kids, you might want to stop at one of the nearby restaurants instead. We actually visited St. Martin in our first cruise we ever had. We did, uh, did this many years ago with my family, and we did an island tour, or my, my family did an island tour. That's a great way to learn the history of the island, which is shared between the Dutch and the French. You can book these through the cruise line or a third party. Another popular activity is snorkeling and sailing. The Creole Rock has a reef that is in shallow, calm water, and they usually limit groups so it won't be that busy. If you're in a shopping, you'll want to check out uh, Front Street. Uh, perk is the entire island is duty free. There's a lot to do on the island from casinos to restaurants to nature reserves, fishing and more. We do want to let you know, especially if you are new to cruising, uh, that you have all these options. If you book your excursions with your cruise line, uh, there is, and if there's ever any issue getting back to the port, then the cruise ship will wait for you or they will cover accommodations to get you to the ship if they can't wait for you. If you use third parties, then the ship will not wait for you, or you will be responsible to catch up with the ship at another port. We like to look at how long we're at a port and for how long the excursion is supposed to take, so we know how much buffer time if there's an issue, and also what is the local transportation. When we were in Europe, uh, you know, European uh, travel can be very uh, busy at times, and so there's a higher propensity of being stuck in traffic uh, versus necessarily a Caribbean port where you're basically just taking a water taxi. So, you know, just determine what your level of risk is, but we wanted to make you make you aware that although you do pay more for a cruise ship excursion, there are benefits when it comes to ensuring that you are not uh, left uh, holding the bag if the cruise ship leaves without you. We often get asked what people should bring when visiting the ports. In terms of money, even though it is a Dutch and French ruled area, U.S. money is, ex is accepted and we found it is actually preferred. It's good to have a little cash with you as well as credit cards so you're not stuck. As we said, we only needed our cruise card to disembark, but other cruise lines have required photo ID, so be sure to check what is required for you. I wish I'd brought our swimsuits and towels so we could have taken the water taxi and gone to the beach, so that may be something you'd want to pack. The port is nice for some shopping, but I think the water taxi is a great price and very reasonable, and the beaches look awesome. In our backpack, we also like to bring a phone charger. We're usually taking this opportunity at port to connect with family, so we go through our battery quickly. We also like to bring sunscreen, water, and our camera. We'll put some affiliate links below if you're interested in purchasing anything that we take with us uh, when we're on these things. Of course, you don't have to, and if you're not interested, don't click on the links, uh, but there will be some links below if you'd like to see what we usually take. So we wanted to go over a few frequently asked questions that we get. One is, what is the drinking age? The legal drinking age is 18. Uh, what currency can you use? As we stated, you can use US dollars. It's the most common currency. Uh, of course, you can bring your credit cards and so forth. What language is spoken? The language uh, is English. The official language is English. There, is there an Uber available? There is no Ubers. However, there are a lot of taxis to the port who can take you where you want to go. And then, are the beaches free? Yes, the beaches near the cruise port are free. If you want to use the chairs and umbrellas uh, that are set up, then you may have to pay for those. So overall, we really enjoyed walking around the port, doing some shopping, and meeting different people. When we were there, other than shopping, there wasn't much to do at the port, so this would be a good place to do an excursion or take the water taxi into town. We were also lucky as there were no other cruise ships when we arrived. I can only imagine how busy it could get, so it might be nice to venture off from the port to find some food. 
Overall, if you're sailing into this port, go ahead and book an excursion. Uh, if you're interested in that, it is not a very big port. Uh, so if you want to do something, if there's something you really want to get done, this is a great port to go and do that because everything basically at the port is what you'd expect from any other port you go to. If you prefer a sort of calmer ship atmosphere, you enjoy just wanting to hang out with the uh, hang out on the ship, you can absolutely just get off and walk around really quickly and enjoy the area, sort of uh, see what's out there, get some great photos. They've got some really good photo uh, opportunities and you can just walk around and enjoy the atmosphere of the port and then get back on the ship. So a lot of good options for whatever you'd like to do. And we really did enjoy this port. So thank you very much for watching so far into our video. Have you ever been to St. Martin? Are there any other recommendations that you would have for people if they're visiting here? Thanks again for watching and happy travels. Thank you.